Once again, wanted to say thank you to everyone for joining us for today's Flexi webinar. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and learn a little bit more about Flexi with us. So today, um, we're going to have Radisha Perik will be presenting on in-depth text commands. And Radisha is the project manager for Flexi here at SAI. So if you have any, any questions or comments or recommendations, go ahead and let him know. But today he's going to be talking all about text and fonts, lots of different options for design for using those, and either new ways you can do them or just more efficient, faster ways to, to get your signs and productions looking the way you want them. So Radisha will give that presentation. And then after that, we'll go ahead and have our standard uh, question and answer session. So if you do have any questions during the presentation, just go ahead and type them into the chat window on the bottom there and we will get to those after the presentation. And those can be about Flexi and text, or if you have any other questions about Flexi, want to know how to do different things that you've just been, been wondering for a while, you can go ahead and ask those. And we'll answer as many of those questions as we can. And then if you have any suggestions for other topics you'd like us to cover in the future, go ahead and type those in as well. We're always happy and want to make this useful for you folks as well. And with that, we'll turn it over to Radisha. Thank you, Stuart. Good morning, everybody. And for some of you, is afternoon already. Uh, some of you have been on the webinars before, I'm sure. And uh, Bobby uh, is our great guy that is doing most of those. And he's really good at it. I'm your, uh, his double book today. So I will be your substitute teacher. Uh, hope I don't disappoint. So today I would uh, like to go over several topics uh, using text and the fonts and uh, manipulating text and fonts in Flexi. Uh, some of the things will be uh, basic things and most of you will know it. Uh, some will be a little bit more advanced. So we'll have hopefully a little bit for everybody. Then uh, we're going to talk about a uh, couple tools that we have introduced, uh, sign design elements, and uh, find my font tool for uh, subscription license users. And if you have any questions, and if you don't hear me well or something is not clear, you can ask Stuart, and we can clear that uh, after the uh, session. So let's uh, dig into it. Uh, as you know, Flexi is using uh, true type fonts and open type fonts, everything that it's loaded onto your system. Uh, there are no Flexi proprietary fonts. Some older versions had some fonts, but right now it's all true type and open fonts. To uh, create text on a toolbar on the left hand side, you have a button that says T. That is a text. We can just click it, or I will hold it so I can drag the whole text tool on a screen and then we can talk about individual tools there. Basically to start any text you select text tool and then you type. I will type something simple text in flexi. Okay let's put it on the middle of the screen. One dialog box that you always want to have open on your screen is your Design Central. As you can see, it has several tabs, depends on what tool you select. If you type, if you take your text tool, your text uh, options or font option come into four plan. Uh, this is where you can change properties for your text object. To change properties, you need to select text. One way to do that is to just mouse over the text and then you can come here and uh, let's talk about those options here. Number one is of course your font type. To change a font type you can simply uh, extend fly out and then go through different options to select your text. Uh, text on the screen will not change but you have a little preview there that will show you exactly how it will look. Okay, I like Berlin sounds and I will select that to change it. And you can see my text on the screen now that has been changed. 
also because it's a true type font, you have options uh, depending on the font. This font has two options to be regular or bold. If you go and change it to uh, something like Arial, you have a regular, bold, italic, bold, italic. And we can select that to manipulate our text. Uh, next field down is a font size. This is a simply, if you can see arrow, from the base of the font to the top of the font, what is the size? We can change that number by manipulating uh, arrow points here or just type uh, number in the field. Now the font is three inches tall. Field below that is our character width scale. If you change this number, it will basically change the width of the character. So in letter, uh, for example, these are all block letters, but it would be uh, from the bottom, from the outside to outside of the bottom line of the text. Uh, I've been uh, working on support a long time, and sometimes those questions will come in play. This number would be changed maybe by mistake to something like this 0 0.01, and that means in percentages. So you can see people will type and there is nothing on the screen showing up. And it's the first thing you want to check that nobody has changed this. If you go back to 100, this will go back in normal. OK. Uh, next field is character slant. This is where you can manipulate text into changing uh, the angle, the slant, and you can make your own italic text. You can go in either way, positive or negative. You can even type numbers. OK, this can be used to create simple effects with the text. Uh, you can go overboard. And if you change it to something like this, 80%, then it's going to be barely visible and useful. So we'll set that back to 0. Next field is tracking. This is counted in percentages uh, in this dialog box. And this will change spacing between lines and your text. Uh, as you can see, it's changing both sides. That depends on what uh, justification we have selected. If I'm on a right, then it will change it. Uh, left just file will just change it in a right direction. We'll go set this back to zero. The line um, over here, you can manipulate individual parts of the text. If I select just where it's in, and I change the uh, number for a character vertical offset, you can see that just word in will be moved up. I'm going to set this back to 0. And the last item uh, in the Design Central is line spacing. This is where you have a text with the multiple lines. I can add second line to this. This is set by default to uh, automatic. It's grayed out. If you click on this arrow here, you have options for automatic and specify. If you want to change line spacing because you don't like default for your design purposes, you can just go to specify and then you can manipulate it. This is something also to watch because this can be changed. Then you type in your text. If you go too low, lines will overlap. And if you do not need that, need that in design, you can simply increase the spacing or just switch to a automatic. Second tab is for our justification. If you have a simple text like this, two lines, uh, this is now left align, if you can see. Uh, we can right align it. So bottom uh, second line with the align on the right-hand side with the top line. Uh, center align, we'll center it underneath the top line. And then if we use full justify, uh, it will ask us to set some parameters. Uh, parameters here, we're going to talk about them a little bit later. If I just click OK, it will spread my words and align text 
uh, on a second line to match the width of the top line. I'm going to change it back to justified. A couple items here to mention. Uh, text uh, left, uh, left to right text and uh, right to left. Uh, if you click on a right to left, you can see that this is not mirror. So don't use this in your design as a mirror text. There are different features for it. This is for languages and characters that write uh, and read from right to left. So if you read text in Flexi line two, a little complicated for us to read. We'll go back to uh, left to right so we can uh, actually read what's on the screen. Uh, one very interesting thing for text in Flexi is that uh, you can go and manipulate particular letters or fonts without manipulating whole lines. For example, you can click and select just a couple letters, and this is where you can go and change uh, any properties for let that letter. I can make this bigger, I can make this smaller, so I'm going to make it two inches. I can change color of that font. So you can see it without affecting the rest of the text. Uh, in some other application, uh, it's it may be a little bit harder to do, uh, or you can need to, to break that text into different elements. Next, next uh, thing I want to cover is uh, changing text attributes with control points. As I said, there are a couple ways to uh, select or manipulate your text. You can select text tool and just mouse over. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go and change back to three inch, just the word in and change it back to black. Okay. Or you can use your selection tool. If I click on a selection tool, my text is selected. If you look at Design Central, you have several tabs. You want to go to your character tab. If you notice, once we click on a character tab, there are different control points that show in our text. Go back to uh, Design Size tab, go back to Character tab. Those are uh, control points that you can manipulate uh, attributes of that text. See a little X at the end? That is for line spacing. If I click and drag on that line, I can move just one line of text and move it anywhere I want on the screen. This is how you can control line spacing very precisely. You can do it through Design Central or you can manipulate it uh, manually in your design. Okay, gonna move it down, it's closer. Uh, little points underneath the fonts will move a characters or uh, words. If I click on that and drag it, it is spacing it equally. And if I go to my justification and change it to a line left, when I change this, it will move everything to the right. Everything after that line. If I hold shift, I can move that one letter uh, horizontally, uh, actually vertically up and down. I'm going to leave it up to show just another feature here. On the top, we have a rotation option. We can rotate a particular character, just one letter to suit your design. So you can do all of this manipulation without converting text to uh, curves and a lot of design programs in order to do that you have to convert it to curves then if you need to come later and change something with your font you cannot do that i can still come here select my text and change uh, font if i need to and this didn't show it you can see that it changed now okay i will do this and uh, Let's work a little bit more with the justification here for a second. I'm gonna open a new document and uh, grab some of the fonts we have prepared here or text. This is just to show us how the justifications 
work here and you can create several lines of text and manipulate uh, all of the lines separately at the same time. So if I go to a line left, I should be able to select left and align word left to the right. Center, I can put it in the center and I keep right on the right side just to confuse everybody. This is a one easy way again in Flexi to manipulate specific lines of text. Don't delete that. We started with creating text by picking up the uh, font tool uh, on our menu, text tool. You can see that there is a several options there. You have regular text, text on the arc, text on the path, uh, vertical text, and vertical path, uh, path text tool. Let's just quickly uh, touch uh, a few of those. Text on the arc, uh, we'll put text on the curved object like this circle. You can see now it's slanted at the angle and I can go always and select my text and change the angle in a design central to fit where I need it. Uh, or I can even use uh, option to manipulate it by attributes and control points just like we did it uh, with the regular text, okay. Uh, when I typed originally, this was on the top. If I need to go and type on the bottom, I can just click uh, hit enter and that will move my cursor to the bottom. And um, here we go. Very simple way to create uh, uh, text on the arc, if you deselect it, that little circle will disappear. If you go back and use that tool to select it again, it will show up and you can continue working with your text. In your design central, you have option how to display text. Do you wanna have multiple lines on the curve? Uh, uh, is it first line about the circle? Does uh, line on the circle, actually circle would go through the middle of that line. Another tool that I like a lot is uh, text on the path. Uh, in order to use uh, text on the path, first you have to create a path. And I'll just create some simple lines here. Uh, I will select the tool and you mouse over, over the path. And when your crosshair changes into cursor, you can click and type text on path. And one thing that I wanna mention, you can see that I have some red lines underneath the word text. That means I have misspelled it. I can uh, right click on it and Flexi will give me suggestions and I can correct it. Manipulating text on the pad is the same as manipulating any text. I like to use uh, manipulation by control points where I can go and select, uh, click on the, this control point here and I can move text on the pad to fit my needs. I can manipulate lines to space them, pose them wherever they, I need to put them. This looks a little bit better on me. Now this line is also uh, not a perfect curve. Uh, even though I have a text on it, I can always go and manipulate line by using uh, path editing tools. So if I select the line, I can see, uh, I can select all of the points and I can work with them to make them smooth or change to fit my design needs and your font and your text will change automatically with, with that. Okay. You can put text on any path. Let me delete everything from screen. Let's just draw a star here. 
I'll make it yellow so we can see. If I select my path text tool, I click on the object. This font looks too big. I'm going to go to one inch. Okay. And I can type star. And I can use my space tool just to keep moving down the path. This takes a little longer, but I like showing this tool because it's fun. Okay. What we have now, we have star with a lot of words start on it. What I can do, I can select just the star that I created and I can delete it and my text will stay. This is a great tool to create custom designs and logos very quickly. Uh, you know, put in a create this word 10 times and then manipulating every single one, trying to align it properly. Uh, vertical text is exactly what it is say. So I can type vertical text and it will do same thing with a path. If you have any path, it will just uh, type uh, words on the path vertically. I select it. Okay. I think this is all straightforward so far. Let's. Uh, talk about some other effects with the text. We have several options that we have induced recently. Some are old, some are new, as a QR code, barcode, braille, and data matrix. So you can take any text and convert it to some of those um, objects. Uh, I'll talk about the QR code. I'll type uh, If I select this text, I will go to my effects uh, text and then convert it to QR code, text to QR code. And I will make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, in a design central, now I have properties for my QR code. And you can choose a uh, code to be whatever you want. You can have it uh, plain text, user can scan it, and it will give them information about the product you created. It can be web URL, what I have created. Right now, if I scan this, it will go directly to our website, thinksai.com. If I have put an email address or a phone number, uh, I can. it can be even an SMS message with the phone number. If you scan this, it will open your uh, messaging program uh, app on your phone, and you can uh, send uh, message to that information. Uh, Data matrix code does a similar thing, but it can contain more information. You can put a bigger blocks of text in there. Uh, barcode is something you can use for labeling products, of course. Um, I'll just use barcode word, simple as that. If you go to text, select the barcode tool, and you have options for uh, uh, three different types of barcode. You select it, I will zoom in, and here is your barcode. Same thing with the Braille. Uh, you can convert any text to Braille and uh, send it to your engraving machine or the way you're gonna produce the ADA signs. Okay. As I said at the beginning, uh, Flexi is using true type fonts and open type fonts. Uh, for all the, for you guys that have a subscription license, uh, some of you might already be using this. And if you don't, I would suggest you take advantage of it. You will see in your cloud window, uh, there is an option for sign design elements. Uh, sign design elements is a uh, site that has millions of designs, templates, fonts, uh, images, 
uh, that if you're a member, you can download. You will use your uh, cloud, SAI cloud account login uh, to log into the website after clicking on that button in the cloud window. Every subscriber has five free downloads a month. If you want more than that, then uh, you need to subscribe with this uh, with assigned design elements uh, uh, directly. Uh, but if you take into account how much one image is at uh, Shutterfly, where you're downloading for, uh, uh, if you just use this, you know, three four times a month, it will pay for your subscription. Sure. Uh, what they also have is fonts, so you can go and search for a font that you want to download. Uh, and I will go uh, just fonts. I can select it from here. So you can search for different elements. Uh, let's go just to fonts and uh, find something that I don't have on a computer. I have search for fonts. Let's refine my search. Okay. Uh, so there's a font that I want to download. It's, it's open type font. Uh, I can click on download, and it's already in my downloads. I can show in the folder here. Extract. And I can just install it into my system. I didn't have this font, and I do. And one thing that I want to show you about the fonts in Flexi uh, you can load fonts on the fly. Usually you have to close application to load any font and with the Flexi. You can load the font and it will just prompt you uh, that the uh, list of fonts has changed. Do you want to reload the fonts? You click yes and uh, that font will be loaded and be ready to, to use uh, if I remember a name. Uh, I don't remember a name right now. But uh, basically, you don't have to interrupt your design to add fonts. You don't have to save, close, and then reopen a file and then add correct fonts. And also, I want to show you sign design elements where you can get free fonts if you're a Flexi subscriber or free designs, uh, free templates of any kind. I want to introduce you one more tool and again, this is for our subscription users that we introduced with the Flexi uh, 19. It is uh, Find My Font. Under your resources in the cloud window, you will see an option to download uh, my font, Find My Font. This will take you, it will literally just download the application and install it on your computer. This is a free application for users and it's one per account. If you have uh, more than one license on the same account, unfortunately, you still get one uh, instance of this, this application. Uh, to activate it, you will use your, again, SAI cloud uh, credentials, uh, but you can transfer it from computer to computer up to 10 times a day. So if you have two designers using it, if they're not using it at the same time, they can activate it on one computer, then they can you know, start it and activate it on a second and use it that way. I'm going to spend five minutes uh, showing you this tool for those who are not familiar. Uh, so Find My Font is a font matching application. It works with your bitmap images. Uh, right now it's outside Flexi, but it's a pretty cool tool to, to, to match fonts. Often you get images from your clients that are picture of a sign or a scanned business card and they want you to match the font. And uh, I was a designer before and I spent hours just clicking through different fonts to try to find that that good match. Let me show you how it works. So over here you can add files. And I'm gonna add something simple like uh, this uh, sign for Whistler. And this is typical what you will get from the customer. How do I know which font this is? I can go into Flexi or my design application and type word Fizzler and just click, 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 click to it and try to find the best match after half an hour. And uh, this way you can save yourself a lot of time. 
So first step you will need to do is click on the text you want to identify. And I'm going to pick some letters that are maybe special that uh, can be used for identify, uh, have a, some character that can be used to identify font. Uh, then I need to type text to match. I'm going to type W, W, S, R. Okay. I'm going to close this tutorial here. On the right hand side, I can I have a button that says match fonts. When I click that button, you can see on this top pane something is happening. Okay. So software has searched my computer and then online database over, over 100,000 fonts to find the best match. You can notice several things here. We have some fonts that are in green, some that are in red or purple. Uh, the fonts in green is what you have on your computer. And it gives you a number. It says estimated. It's kind of 86% match. So you can select and see if this is a good match. You can even go here and type whole word. Whistler. Okay. And it's showing and displaying it in the font that you select. You can see that it's changing. And you can say this is a good match or not uh, from what you have on your computer. Now, the ones on the top, they are better match, but this is something you do not have on your computer. And you can see in the end, it will say commercial, and I might say on some of those, it says freemium. That means this font you have to purchase if you don't have it. This you might be able to download for free. Let's look at just top of the list. Uh, you can double click. When you double click on the font, what happens, it will open and will go online to find my font library and will say this is a Franklin Gothic font and publisher is Elsner and this is where you can buy it. If you click on the find my, on my fonts, it will take you to their, just basically to their website and then it's uh, on you to go and find the font and purchase it there. It's a very, very effective way to save you a lot of time. Um, if you can save 15 minutes per design, it, it already paid for your subscription already uh, for that month. If you want to work on something even more complicated, uh, let's see. Let's say this, this example here, when font is slanted, what you need to do is you need to set a baseline. And I can zoom in. I'll click underneath the text. And I'll drag over here. I think that's going to be straight enough. When I turn it, it will rotate your text. Now I can go about my business selecting letters. CMC, match the font. And you can see it's going through all of my system fonts and also finding some align. And I'm saying this one that I have is probably exact match. And I can double check here. Looks good to me. I think this is what I would use. So a lot of tools uh, under help. There is a great tutorial. It's very easy. Uh, to use tool and if you guys have a subscription, I would encourage you to use it. It is a free tool uh, for all the subscribers and um, I'm sure you'll find it very useful. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to conclude here. So we went over some basic tools, uh, font tools in the Flexi. Uh, and um, at the end, we touched the find my font tool uh, and I'm sure we're gonna have if we didn't have already a seminar just on find my font uh, because it's a very deep and very simple tool to use and uh, thank you very much for uh, staying with us and I will turn it over to Stuart now see if we have any questions all right thank you so much Radisha for going over that so now we're going to go ahead and start the Q&A session of the webinar. Uh, so there have already been a couple of different questions in the, the chat window here.
And I really appreciate everybody in the chat window that's been helping other people out, getting their sound working, giving suggestions there, uh, answering some technical questions. Uh, there was one here that I saw that I don't think we've had an answer for yet. Jason said, if you have a lot of text, a list of names, for example, is it possible to flow the text from one text box to another? So if you have a lot of text? Yeah, he said. I, like I didn't a list hear that last part, Stuart. Sorry. If you have a list of names. Yeah, so if you have a lot of text, a list of names, for example, is it possible to flow the text from one text box to another? I'm not sure if I uh, understand question. Uh, yeah, Jason, do you want to elaborate, want to elaborate on that Jason? at all? And while he's typing that, um, Rick also asked, uh, in arch text, how do you center level? Center level? Uh, let me uh, select my tool here. So if it's moved like this, mm -hmm. uh, if I understand, you can uh, usually uh, it remembers my last setting. I would set this to a uh, the angle. I think it's 90. If you set it to 90, it will put it right in the center. Uh, you can manipulate it again by using uh, the control points where you can position it wherever it fits. Because sometimes in your design, the center is not uh, visually pleasing. So you can move it that way. If you need to move it to center it on the line the option for where to show text see so yeah, i can move it uh, to go uh, to the center of the line below the line it's using a baseline for that or uh, same thing on the bottom i don't know okay. if this answers rick's question perfect thank you uh let's see going back to jason's question uh brian commented on it as well he said in InDesign, you can drag out a text box and fill it with text and have a second text box so the text continues, say, down a different column. So if you had two okay. different text boxes. Uh, I think uh, I, I think I understand now better. So if I have a text box in Flexi here, uh, if I'm typing, I'll just scribble here. All right. and, and let I'll me go. just interrupt for a second. Jason commented. He said, if you have a list of eight names and you want the text to flow into two columns of four without duplicating the list and deleting the names you don't need, is there a command for that? No. Okay. Uh, yes, InDesign is a layout program and it has much more advanced features when it comes to it. You would have to create two text boxes to okay. uh, create that. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and about the arch text, uh, Christina said, in the arch text, how can you readjust the size of the arch okay. uh, without distorting the text? So if you said I changed my defaults here, so um, when you're changing the size of the diameter of the circle, the font will stay the same size. So if you go too small, then it will uh, not uh, change the text size. Uh, and there is a couple ways to adjust the diameter of that circle. Uh, you can, should be able to Actually, the best way is the only way for me is to, to use precise tools in the Design Central. But your font is not changing. If I uh, select all, I don't think I can change it because it will just use my text uh, tool. Uh, is, uh, afraid, is, uh, is, is she afraid that uh, if you make circle too small or too big, the text will get distorted? I believe so, yes. So you can adjust the font size in separately from the... You, it's independent. You would have to adjust the diameter of the of your arc 
and text separately in order for it to match. OK. Excellent. Thank you. OK, and I have saw a few people commenting that they're not seeing um, what Radish is doing on his screen. And so just mm -hmm. want to, to let everyone know we are recording this webinar. And so we'll be posting that onto our YouTube channel later today. And we'll send everyone a link to the recording. So if for some reason uh, you weren't able to, to see Radisha's screen during any part of the webinar, you can go ahead and watch that part. Or if you have someone who's new to Flexi or looking to, to learn more about the text tools, you can send them the link to the recording. So we will have that up and send everyone a copy of that link. OK. And then we had a couple more questions, and then we'll close it up for the day. Uh, Fran said that there is a webinar on creating transparent PNG files. Uh, we were not able to get into the seminar, and it's not on the YouTube channel. OK, so that was the one for last month. Um, so Bobby mm -hmm. is was creating that webinar. Unfortunately, his computer is still having some technical issues where it's not recording his sound. So he is still working on that. And when he has that ready, we'll go ahead and send you a link to, to that webinar. And uh, Richard said, is there any chance for transparency option in gradients in the future? Uh, so flexi development. Yes, uh, there are plans for that. We currently don't have it. Uh, the, the transparency tool uh, is one of the, uh, not transparency gradient tool, is one of the tools that it's unless to be revamped. Okay. And hopefully we can get to it soon. Fantastic. OK, and Rick, uh, looks like you're having some trouble with the colors in Flexi 19. Um, I will give your information to our tech support team, and we can uh, follow up with that and help get that fixed for you. All right, and that's all the time we have for today. But we appreciate you coming. If you have any, any further questions, you can go ahead and uh, either send an email to tech support or uh, here to uh, Radisha, what would be the best email for them to email if they have uh, if, further, further questions? If there's any questions, uh, I mean, if there's a technical question, e-support, I think sai.com is definitely the best one. Okay, let me type um, that in. That gets to our uh, application specialist as well for any question All right. and tutorials. And, like and they work closely with Radisha, so they'll be able to pass on any any questions there so we can help you get those all fixed up and or if you have any other topics uh, that you'd like to see covered in in the future for one of these webinars go ahead and either type that into the chat window or send us an email that same e-support at thingsai.com email address and thank you all for coming we really do appreciate you coming we're we appreciate your questions and we will see you next month <laughs>